with a vision to save lives. Patriot One is addressing the spread of violence with disruptive, covertly deployed technologies that identify concealed threats. Patriot One's revolutionary detection solutions recognize threats using a layered, multi-sensor strategy which can be deployed in schools, hotels, stadiums, and more. Powerful technology to deter, detect, and defend. Patriot One, PAT, on the TSX Venture Exchange. Okay, well, thanks very much for, uh, for, for joining me here. I, um, being of British origin, I hate to be the person that stands between you and the beer, so um, I hope we can make this sufficiently exciting for you to uh, make it worthwhile. So my name's Martin Cronin. I'm the CEO of Patriot One Technologies. Okay, public safety through threat detection. So what we are bringing forward are innovations to protect lives. Uh, to keep people safe from acts of terror, random acts of violence, wherever they may gather. So our, our vision is to be the foremost global proponent and provider of threat detection solutions for public safety. Now, in terms of what does that mean, you know, where, where can we operate? We're talking about anywhere where the public gather, and as I say, maybe at risk of acts of violence. So mass transportation, tourism, hospitality, government sector, prisons, retail, you name it. Now, what's the basis of this? Well, we were set up um, in 2016 to commercialize some technology out of McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario called Cognitive Microwave Radar. So this is bringing together low-powered radar with machine learning to do real-time detection of concealed threats. So if somebody's carrying a gun or a knife or a bomb uh, into a public space, that you can detect that before any sort of attack happens. Now, where are we at in that journey? As I say, this technology was developed at McMaster University over a period of seven years with funding from Canadian federal government and from NATO. We spent the last two years taking that proof of concept and taking a huge set of lab equipment, shrinking that down into a commercial package, going out and getting regulatory certification so that we could take it into public spaces, and then training the system, training the algorithms to recognize all of the real world conditions to allow real time detection of threats to take place. So where, we are, where we're at now, um, if you look at this slide, we're into the paid pilot installations. So as of uh, just before Christmas, we began that process of installing with clients, paying for the systems prior to a full commercial rollout as we go into the second uh, quarter two, 2019. However, what we have also done during this period, we, we recognize um, through all of our interaction with, with clients around the world that there is no one single solution, that there's no silver bullet to the problem of uh, acts of violence in public spaces. And so we've been actively looking for other innovations and adjacent technologies that uh, can come onto a common platform. So what we've been building is something we call a multi-sensor threat detection platform. So we are no longer a technology. We're no longer commercializing a single technology, but instead bringing forward a suite of innovations for public safety. And uh, just before Christmas, we announced an acquisition of an innovative company in New Brunswick uh, called AI that has video recognition software. Again, a artificial intelligence based. The algorithms have been taught to recognize threat objects in a video feed. If somebody produces a gun or a knife, the algorithms running behind your camera system recognize that object, generates an alert, flags it up for the operator, and tracks that individual. There are also other modules uh, within that system, such as detecting disturbances or unusual patterns of movement. So that's been showcased in stadiums to detect a, a fight breaking out in the crowd, as well as weapons appearing. So again, that's now into paid pilot uh, deployments. Uh, we're working very closely with Cisco. It's one of our most important partnerships. Cisco love this technology, VRS. They've put it into their innovation center here in Toronto as a showcase and are now taking us out to some of their most important clients globally to, to showcase that. <clears throat> we also then just announced this morning, so hot off the press, uh, that we've established a joint venture called SOTEC in the US to commercialize a technology developed at the University of Texas in Dallas. We're very excited about this one. This is uh, technology for the standoff detection of volatile organic compounds, with our primary target initially being explosives. So what this means is the ability to detect at up to 250 feet the presence of explosives. This has been um, successfully demonstrated at a US naval base in San Diego. 
So uh, we are now commercialising that for rollout again in quarter two 2019. Now, in addition to detection of explosives, this technology can be used to detect um, opioids like fentanyl, and we've had some discussions with the US Postal Service. It's, of course, a, a massive concern, uh, not just in the US, but here in Canada and, and most developed markets, the, uh, the flow of fentanyl coming from China. So we see huge application in opioid detection for this technology as well. So we're very excited about that one, as I say, just announced this morning. So, as I say, what we're building is not a single technology where we're trying to uh, shove a square peg into a round hole, but instead saying, what's your environment? What's your challenge? What are the threats you face? Because we have a suite of solutions that we can bring to bear. So whatever the problem, we will have a solution. So we, we've gone through an evolution over the last couple of years from being a technology to being a solutions provider. So um, what this means is that any uh, facility can think in terms of concentric rings of security, that at the furthest point out, you can begin detection, you can be begin to detect threats before people come anywhere near your facility. And as they pass through these additional layers, you can get down to greater and greater granularity of, of detection. Now, the philosophy behind it is that essentially we're not in the business of creating fixed visible security screening architecture of the sort that you see in an airport. Because our view is that whilst that has a, a role to play, particularly in airport security, it doesn't prevent attacks from happening. It, pre it prevents certain types of attacks, but if you think about something like the, the Brussels airport attack of a couple of years ago, a group of terrorists went into that airport. They didn't expect to go through the security screening area, but that didn't stop them from going into that facility, into the check-in area, and committing an act of mass murder. So our philosophy is you embed sensors unseen to do detection at the furthest point out. So if you can detect a threat before the person carrying that threat knows that detection has happened, you have a chance to actually preemptively get on top of a threat. So our whole philosophy is really around how do you embed detection, you know, how do you disperse it, how do you put the screening where the people are, rather than having to bring people to the point of screening, which only makes the, you know, uh, the, the attack happen somewhere else. So everything we're doing is around this multi-sensor threat detection platform, pushing the security perimeter out. And so we're in the business now of rounding out our portfolio, of bringing in other interesting innovations. We have a number of other technologies that we're actively looking at at the moment. That's not to say that we're on a shopping spree. We're doing very, very careful diligence and evaluation on those technologies. But what we find is that there are, there are a lot of innovations out there that just don't see the light of day because these companies are not funded to, to, to execute on the opportunity. We're very well capitalized. We, we went public in uh, the fall of 2016. We have a treasury of about $75 million. So we're funded to go out and find some of these innovations that fit into our portfolio. And we have a client base that's ready for these solutions. We have 12 distributors appointed, uh, sorry, distributors appointed in 12 countries. We have around about 10,000 qualified sales leads waiting on solutions. We're now rolling out into our, our first paid pilots. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a number of very, very key partnerships, uh, one of the most important of which is, is Cisco, who love our approach to detection, which is to embed sensors and network data and put the alarms where they need to be. Um, and so that's why um, you know, we have a really strong emerging partnership with them. Uh, we also have a number of uh, um, emerging key relationships in the defense industry, and we made an announcement uh, a few months ago around one of those. The, the name will be revealed shortly. It's waiting on government uh, approval on the transaction. So there'll be a big, big reveal. We'll pull back the curtain and let you know who that is shortly. So we've got a, some very interesting news flow that you can expect to see over the course of the, the next quarter. So for us, you know, this is, um, this is a really exciting year. This is where the last couple of years of, of hard effort and, um, you know, we all know that, you know, the challenge of, you know, when you're in public markets, you need to feed the beast, you need to get news out, you need to tell people what you're doing. And that's a challenge when you're in that development phase. And, you know, people will always want more information perhaps than you, you're, you're able to provide. But this is a year where the last couple of years of development, the last couple of years of profiling really come to fruition. And, ex and you can expect to see great things from Patriot One in the course of 2019. Now, as I say, I'm conscious of time. 
I think that's probably um, about where we're, at, where we're at. But I'm just going to leave up one final slide here, which is uh, technology um, on its own, if it lives in isolation, rarely uh, achieves its full potential. It needs to live within an ecosystem where you have appropriate policies and practices in place. And so um, a lot of our work uh, over the last couple of years has been about how do we create an ecosystem for public safety? And it's what we call a people policy and platform, that people need to be trained appropriately, you need to have appropriate um, policies and protocols in place, because in the end, what we provide is information. We don't determine the response. Our job as a company, and there are good liability reasons for this, our job is to detect a threat and provide the information to the people responsible for the response. We don't mount the response ourselves. But in order for the technology to be successful and therefore to have mass adoption, it's important that organizations have in place these three pillars of people policy and, and platform. So within the company, you have a great deal of expertise uh, coming out of the UK, the US and Canada uh, in the security world. And we're spending a lot of time engaging with clients to ensure that what we're creating is an ecosystem for, for public safety. And in that way, we believe that this, this year ahead is just going to be a tremendously exciting one for Patriot One. You know, we're not a technology in search of a home. We've, we've generated that home, we've generated that market, we've generated that appetite, and then we've been dragging the technology around, dragging the technology in behind us. Now that we're ready to get out there and show the world what we've got, it's going to be a tremendously exciting year. So thank you very much. I don't know if we have a little bit of time for questions, but um, unless somebody tells me otherwise, I'd be, uh, be happy to take a couple. Do, do we do questions in here? I'm not sure. Let's, let's throw, throw it open anyway. Great, those are the kind of questions I like. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for listening. I believe there's a drinks reception coming up now and I'll be, I'll be in there, so by all means, come and, come and chat further. Many of my colleagues are here as well, so thank you.